It was the marquee item in Sunday's Boston Globe, a big interview with Cardinal Sean O'Malley on the future of the Catholic Church. But that exclusive came with a price. Certain topics that O'Malley didn't want to address were off limits. Adam Riley has more. Boston Globe newcomer John Allen is one of the best-known journalists covering the Catholic Church today. That clout helped Allen land this front-page interview with Cardinal Sean O'Malley. But there was a big caveat. O'Malley asked that the conversation focus on the Pope and the global church, not local matters such as the controversy at Fontbonne Academy. Matthew Barrett of Milton is filing a complaint with the Massachusetts Commission Against Discrimination today. Fontbonne recently made news by rescinding a job offer to Matthew Barrett after learning he's in a same-sex marriage. Ellen says that ideally, that topic would have been fair game. We obviously would have loved to be able to ask uh, O'Malley everything under the sun. But Ellen notes that the interview was arranged before the Fontbonne story broke. This was originally pitched to O'Malley back in January as an interview about the Pope and the global church. Uh, and I had said to him at the time, we're not going to be talking about local stuff because, frankly, that's not what I do. Later, when the Globe asked to broaden the interview, O'Malley said no. The paper agreed to do it anyway and got what Allen calls a major scoop. For the first time, he took a clear position against changing church rules to allow divorced and remarried Catholics to receive the sacraments. That's a matter of intense concern to millions of Catholics all around the world. Allen admits that covering an insular institution like the Vatican requires plenty of diplomacy. But he adds, so do other beats. Oftentimes the president will agree to an interview to talk foreign policy, but not domestic policy. And, and you got to make the decision, is, is that worth it? As Allen sees it, the answer is usually yes. Generally, it's better to get some of what you want rather than nothing. All right, so is it worth accepting an interview with conditions? Joining us to hash it out are Adam Riley of WGBH News, Joshua Benton of the Nino, Nino, Neiman Journalism Lab, Callie Crossley of WGBH News, and Dan Kennedy of Northeastern University. Well, Adam, one thing I don't understand is why John Allen went back to the Cardinal to ask permission whether he could ask local things. What if he had just brought it up? I mean, would he have thrown him out of the room? He, they might have. I mean, he certainly had that option. And I think that given some of the more aggressive coverage of the church we've seen from the Globe recently, mm -hmm. particularly around the pre-sex abuse scandal, we might have expected that. But Allen has been a Vatican correspondent, and a very good one for a mm -hmm. long time. And he acknowledged to me in the interview we had that there's an intense amount of diplomatic calculation that goes into doing that job. So I think he's used to a certain MO when it comes to getting access and agreeing to parameters beforehand and probably wanted to make sure that he was fully clear with the Cardinal about what those parameters were going to be and whether they were changeable. Yeah, they might have been able to ask him about Fontbonne then, but it's possible O'Malley would have clammed up and not wanted to talk about other stuff. Mm -hmm. I was ready to be pretty critical of the Globe on this. Um, they're launching that new publication on Catholicism. I thought this might have been a calculated choice based on that. Alan kind of convinced me in our conversation that, as he said, better to get something mm -hmm. than nothing, and they did get news out of this. This is sort of a sports tr yeah. trick, too. A lot of sports guys do the same thing. What do you think, Helen? I, it makes me very uncomfortable because in that scenario, if you hadn't said anything, you go and you interview him on, you know, what your general theme is, but the guy sits in a certain position, and it happens to be also be in Boston, and there's another Catholic institution that's in play here. So it is perfectly reasonable to ask him the question. He can say, I don't choose to answer, but mm -hmm. I think you should ask. And if you're representing a, a news organization and you don't ask, and then one that has really um, uh, it enhanced its own reputation by going further and deeper and getting the story. Don't, don't disagree that it was interesting to, to read what he did get, but, but you don't want anything to cast a pall over how he got it, is my feeling about it. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't make me very uncomfortable, but it makes me a little uncomfortable. I, I think that overall it was probably worth it. Uh, I think it's been really interesting to see what um, John Allen has been doing for the Globe in the very short time that he's been here. But I'd really rather see a no ground rules interview, quite frankly. And um, one of the things that is prem that that you, you kind of have this premise that this is a one way transaction that that the Globe is getting something out of this interview, but Cardinal O'Malley is getting nothing out of it. Well, in fact, he agreed to it because he thinks he's getting something out of it too. So this is a transaction that presumably is beneficial to both parties. Uh, let's do this without ground rules and. 
ask the questions respectfully, and mm -hmm. if the cardinal doesn't want to answer them, he doesn't have to answer them. And if it, let me just say this: the other part of that is, if it's no holes, then both parties are clean. You know, I, I, as Sean O'Malley said, there was no holes, but I can tell you, no, I'm not answering something. You know, I, 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 you do, know. I do think that the key issue is that there's transparency. I think the Globe did a fine job with yeah. that. They say high up in the story, we this is an interview about X, it's not an interview about Y. And, and I, I guess I do understand the idea that the religion writer is going to approach things differently than the investigative unit of the spotlight team, someone like that. I do think, though, that the distinction isn't as clear here because this, you could view uh, this controversy as a local story. You could also view it as a really fundamental question about how the Catholic Church is going to deal with laws that are changing all across the United States. This, it's, it's a real issue that goes beyond just one case at one school. So I think it would have been fair game. I think if it were me, I, who knows, but I think I probably would have just not brought it up and then asked it while I was walking out the door. Get your interview. And I think, By the way, one last thing, Cardinal. To your point, had he asked about Fontbon in that context, it would have come on the heels of Pope Francis saying of uh, mm -hmm. you know gay individuals, I can't remember if it was gay individuals or gay priests, but the line was something like, who am, who am I? I to judge? Mm -hmm. right. So it would have had a, a national and international connection. Mm -hmm. A couple more points I think are worth noting here. Lisa Wangsness, the Globe's mm -hmm. religion reporter, uh, who is also continuing to do religion writing with John Allen's arrival, she was there for the interview as well. She does cover local issues. And uh, I have to admit, as I was talking, I blanked out on my second point. Uh, <laughs> but she didn't ask it either. She, she didn't write exactly. Point. She yeah. didn't ask. Oh, I, now I thank you yeah. for giving me a chance to remember. <laughs> Alan said in the interview we did with him, I don't do local yeah. stories. Right. It's going to be very interesting to see if he continues to not do local stuff and if any story he's involved with doesn't take a mm -hmm. local focus or whether that changes. Yeah, as he it also speaks to a bigger issue, though. This cardinal has been very, very insulated. I mean, say what you will about uh, Cardinal Bernie Law. He was accessible all the time. He would have addressed this, not maybe in a way that was satisfactory to any of the news media, but he would have addressed that. This uh, cardinal does not do uh, TV interviews. When he first got to town, he sat down with each of us and over at the Archdiocese for a couple of minutes, and that was it. She did some in the wake of the church's big win on uh, assisted suicide, physician-assisted suicide. So he's been a little more visible lately. Yeah. And, and you kind of have to wonder what the reaction that the cardinal and the people around him might be when they looked at that Globe story and said, gee, you know, the optics of this saying that we're not going to answer these questions don't look right. Mm -hmm. And they might rethink it and, the next and time. And Boston, really... In terms of news, it can it can be considered local, yes, but it's usually always national. If you're interviewing you the know. Boston Archbishop, then it's a local story. Right. I'm not going to hold my breath for my interview. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs>